everyone welcome to excel problem solving series so this problem which i have into my video is quite interesting and you'll be learning a lot from this particular video we'll be learning about the sum product function and its application into such kind of different problem if we encounter into our interviews so we can just solve this problem using the sum product function now the sum product function is quite complex internally how the function works i will just break down and explain all the concepts into much simpler way friends let us see what is the problem so you can see into the column a i have the builder name to the column b i have the units into the column c i have the average dollar commission into the column d i have the total dollars commission and into the column e i want to get the commission amount there is a different table you can see the commission rates from which dollar to which dollar and what is the rate percentage which should be provided so for example from zero dollars to five hundred dollars the rate percentage is one percent from one thousand one dollars to two thousand dollars the rate percentage is three percent so similarly this particular the total dollar commission column which we have here we just need to get the commission amount which will be charged as per these amounts so we'll be using this particular range table range to get the commission amount now this particular formula is quite complex you can see so that is why i've just present the results from before and here from here i'll be explaining each and every part of this particular formula what it is doing that can help you to clear your concepts so do watch this video till the very end and it will be very much useful to you i guarantee that so friends let us see what is the formula and what it is doing sequentially so here i have used the index function and the sum product function so index function i hope it is very much clear and if it is not please watch the video because this is a formula which is asked into the interviews a lot of many times coming to the sum product function i'll be breaking down this particular formula which i've used the sum product function and I, i'll be explaining what is this particular formula it is doing internally and from there we'll be moving ahead so i'll just paste this particular formula here Let's see what it is doing so i'll just open my notepad for now So what does the sum product function it does let us see this so let's say for example i have two arrays here so this is my first array this is my second array and there is a resultant array let's say one more array i'll take and i'm getting a resultant array which is a third array now into these arrays let's say i am having certain values into the first array i have a comma b comma c into the second array i have d comma e comma f into the third array i have g comma h comma i and friends let's say i am just multiplying all of these three arrays so what is the answer which i'll be getting and the answer which i'll be getting this is what exactly the sum product function it does so i'll just multiply the corresponding values the first values of each array and sum it with multiplying all the second values of each array similarly i will just multiply the third values of each array and then i'll just sum them up and this would be my resultant answer for some product function so friends you can see i have lot of many arrays and i'm getting the answer now the same concept i'll be using into this particular problem here also you can see i have three different arrays this is my very first array this is my second array and this is my third array first of all let us see what is this particular array it does also you can see this two dash which is present here i'll come to this particular what does this dashes indicate this two dashes which i provided how does it function so friends let us come to this so what is d2 so d2 if you'll see it is 3112 and i'm checking this particular condition less than equal to for range j4 to j11 so whenever this particular condition it will be correct it will return a one and whenever this particular function 
is incorrect it will return a zero and this particular dashes which i provided it is to indicate the formula that return me into the numerical digits otherwise it will return me into the value of true and false but i don't want that i want to get a numerical value so that it solves my problem which is mentioned here so friends let us see what is the array which i'll be getting through this particular function so what is d2 so i'll just write here first of all d2 so d2 is 3112 and i'll just check from range j4 to j11 i'll go on to check so 3112 is less than equal to 500 is this correct it is not correct similarly 3112 is less than equal to 1000 not correct 2000 not correct 3000 uh, not correct but when it comes to 4000 obviously 4000 is greater than so if you just put 4000 into this part and you, if you put t2 into this part which is 3112 obviously 4000 is greater than 3112 so i'll get a one so for each value which is present to this particular range it will check for each value for this particular d2 value and for rest of the values 5000 6000 and 7000 they are obviously they are correct or they are true now the very first array is sorted out now coming to the second array which is d2 again so d2 would be checked from the range i4 to i11 this time so is d2 which is 3112 is greater than 0 obviously 3112 is greater than 501 yes 1001 yes 2001 yes 3001 yes 4001 no so and for the rest of the cases it will be no so 3112 is not greater than 6001 so that is why we are getting zero now coming to the last array which is the row one now what does this row function it does so for any cell let's say if i'll just mention this row function it will return the row value of that particular cell so that is what this rows fu row function it is actually doing so i'm just making a dynamic array using this row function for row a1 to a8 you can see a1 to a8 i'll be getting a array with all the row values of all these cells so what is the value which i'll be getting so from a1 to a8 what is the row value which i'll be getting into an array form so it will be 1 comma 2 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 comma 6 comma 7 comma 8 now you'll tell me ashutosh why did we give only eight values so that our array size it remains the same that is a mandatory condition to multiply each of the array if the array size is different how can we get the answer so we just need to give a array size which matches our rest of the array size so that is why i have given eight values here now we'll be multiplying all of these which is present here arrays and let us see what is the answer which i'll be getting so 0 into 1 into 1 is 0 so 0 multiplied with anything would be 0 only so i'll just write the answer for all of them but here you can see i'm getting 1 into 1 into 5 that would be 5 similarly here zeros are there so i'll just write here zeros so what is my final answer so I, if i would just sum up all the numbers which are present into this particular array it would result of 5 so i'm getting 5 with the help of this particular formula of the sum product function and if i would just replace the answer which we have got here which is 5 you can see with this entire function of the sum product so what is the answer which i'll be getting so we'll be getting something like index and the ranges from this particular range they are mentioned and from this particular range i'll be getting the fifth row value which is coming so you can see one two three four five so into the fifth row into this particular range i'm getting the five percentage value so that is why into the answer you can see i'm getting the five percentage value so you can just check similarly for 
any of the random values you can just pick up from here and you can also cross verify whether you are able to understand this particular concept or not and i've got the correct answer or not now friends why did i make this particular formula so much complex i would have easily solved this particular problem using the if else condition or if s condition if you remember if i had used the if s conditions i would just have provided multiple condition for each of the uh, rows which are present into this particular commission rate table so i would just have mentioned that if d2 is greater than i4 and if d2 is less than a j4 then return me this particular rate value similarly if d2 is greater than i5 and d2 is less than j5 return me two percentage value so i would have just simply mentioned all of these condition but why did i make this particular formula so much complex using the index function using the sum product function this is because say this was a thousand row table commission rates which are present here so in that case if you are using the if condition you would simply write thousand conditions and you can just think of how inefficient that particular function is for all such cases that is why using just this sum product function i'm solving this particular problem so even if the table is let's say of thousand conditions i would simply use the sum product function and it would serve my purpose so you can just see how is the scalability of this particular function which is the sum product and we are using it into this particular problem so friends i hope you had found this video very much informational and useful so do like this video and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't to receive such kind of useful information in the next video thank you so much bye